Are you intensely passionate about something? Do you wake up every morning excited to start the day? Well, I bet if you post those questions to Garrett Gaudet, he would tell you absolutely yes. He describes himself as a serial Canadian entrepreneur who's excited about entrepreneurship, music, and helping fellow entrepreneurs discover their brands, create content, and build their websites. He's best known as the host of the Electronic Music Podcast Weekly and the creative director of Strove Creative. He joined me this week to discuss his entrepreneurial journey and his love of music. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. Ready? I welcome you to the program, and I'm excited to learn all about uh, uh, Strove Creative and what's keeping you busy as a marketer and a content creator. Great to see you, and uh, thanks so much for being here this afternoon. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Happy to be here. So, Garrett, I want to know all about your day as the creative director of Strove Creative. I know you help people build brands, build websites, and find uh, their identity as entrepreneurs. So I'm wondering if I can start you off by asking, uh, uh, how do you spend your days as the uh, creative director of Strobe Creative? Every day is a little different, fortunately. So uh, in, in an industry like social media and website design and content creation, uh, we have very similar clients as far as we have clients for social media and then different clients for website design. But every day presents a different opportunity, a different challenge of creating content that fits with a specific web or specific business and um, meeting the goals or um, helping to execute uh, marketing opportunities and goals for businesses. So every day is a little different, um, whether it's tackling website design or creating a social media campaign, whether it's a paid campaign or organic, depending on what the budget is. Uh, but every day is it uh, presents a lot of opportunities to, for myself to be creative, and that's why I love what I do. Fantastic, and I know that you're also passionate about mentoring different businesses. So uh, in the future, would you want to be a business investor as well? Yeah, I would be definitely open to something like that. So I am an instructor at Fanshawe College, but also am a mentor in the Business Entrepreneurship Program. And uh, it's, it's great to work with entrepreneurs. And as a young entrepreneur myself, I find it very inspiring and motivating to work with other like-minded individuals or just to see someone trying to tackle something as difficult and challenging as a career in entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, and watching them kind of grow from this concept to actually executing and pursuing their dream, as a lot of business owners are kind of doing that out of a passion project or finding us as a opportunity to employ themselves. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely be open to investing entrepreneurs and um, I'm, I've kind of dabbled with that already. So yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. And tell me, I'm curious to know, how have you grown as an entrepreneur in your mentorship role? Well, I think the role of a mentor is very important for the mentor and the mentor and it, I think as a mentor you can't approach everything as you know everything. You can obviously bring your experience and knowledge to the table when you are working with a mentee as a mentor 
But I think there's so many exciting opportunities to learn from that person as well as to work with them and work with them with their challenges or just have someone to bounce things off of as someone to brainstorm with or uh, just help motivate them to get to where they want to be. And when we look at website design, I'm also curious to know, have you seen any uh, new trends over the past year or so that you think uh, may have a little bit of staying power? I, I think so. I think there's definitely trends where it comes to design as far as adding a much more dynamic website and not and ensuring that it reflects your brand as much as possible. I always tell clients and colleagues that the web, a website's a perfect opportunity to refresh your branding or start from scratch and make it your first footprint on the internet as far as what you want your company to be positioned as or perceived with your branding or marketing intentions. When it comes to other design trends, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, opportunities to create a more balanced internet when we talk about accessibility and making sure everyone can access websites um, no matter what their um, uh, challenges might present. And you talk about accessibility, and as you know from doing a little bit of research on me, I work with uh, people with uh, disabilities to find them employment. So I'm also curious to ask you, in your perspective in the bu business industry, how can uh, the field of marketing and website design open up uh, employment opportunities for individuals with disabilities? I think there's lots of, uh, I think the internet is a great place for anyone to start to build a career, no matter disability or not. But if you do have disabilities, it definitely presents a, a platform where you can develop skills in website design. There's lots of great platforms that present the appropriate resources and tools to grow a business or to grow a business on your own, or to even start to work with clients if, if a website development is something you're looking at pursuing. And when it comes to social media, I think there's more mediums and platforms and channels that you can really, you know, take advantage of, whether it's podcasting with audio content or videos with video content. And more and more platforms are incorporating closed captions and different opportunities, different abilities to make it accessible for everybody. I'm also curious to ask you, um, in, in terms of website design and brand building, how do you think those two things are interconnected? I, I think they work hand in hand. I think the opportunity to use your website to kind of reestablish your brand or to create a brand. I know I find myself probably semi-annual just creating a new website for my personal website from the ground up and just refreshing it, restating what I'm trying to do as a personal, as my personal brand or as my brand itself. Or even when it comes to Strobe Creative, I think it's the opportunity to really take something from nothing and then really make it something special. No matter if you're starting from scratch or you already have a pre-existing business, that just needs some revitalization, website is a perfect place to start. And Garrett, I'm also curious to ask you, I always tell people don't be afraid to maximize your own personal potential. So I'm also one wondering from your perspective, how do you hope to grow as a business owner or entrepreneur, say in the next three to five years? What sort of goals uh, do you have for yourself personally? I think as an entrepreneur, uh, first off, as an entrepreneur, I think there's just, it's trying to find as much passion out of the projects I'm working on and choosing projects carefully where I think I can really have a great time doing what I'm doing with that business or project. And then also really work on developing a personal brand. I think I've done a great job over it over the last seven years as the host and creator of Eating Weekly, a podcast that has seen to grow to number one in the podcast starts. But as that's come to an end, it's looking for different opportunities to present myself and carry out my passions. And then as a business owner, I think three to five years is just such a, it, it can be such a long 
time frame or a long time period to think about. But I think it's staying true to myself as a business owner of what, what I can provide at, as a business to a client as far as value, expertise, and helping them grow to their fullest potential and helping them execute it. And I know that uh, your podcast had created over 360 episodes, so I want to uh, uh, commend you on that. It's a lot of work to uh, put together content and find guests. Um, so as you know, as a fellow a podcast creator, so I'm always cur- curious to ask other podcast creators. And since you've had success, I'll ask you this question as well. Um, what do you think is the key or secret uh, to being a consistent and effective podcaster? For sure. Uh, thank you. I, I think it's a little bit cliche, but it's it's definitely consistency. I think what's what helped me throughout the seven year run of the show is it just uploading same time every week and setting expectations for your audience. I think once they know what they can expect from your show, whether it's the intro or listening to one episode and then listening to another, having the abilities to um, present your show in the most professional capacity as possible. So I invested in something like a podcast intro and uh, audio uh, uh, audio intro and outro for my show as well. And then I also did a lot of networking within my industry. So it was more electronic music industry within the music industry of that genre. And I did a lot of networking. So I opened up the opportunities to meet a lot of different artists uh, in the electronic music world networked with uh, the record labels, artists, marketing and PR teams of those artists. And I think it really allowed me to get some really exclusive guests on for some DJ mixes and uh, just provide my show with other credible brands or artists to kind of elevate my podcast to another level. And then it's just, I think as a host or creator, you want to make sure that you're showing your audience that you're having fun, that you're enjoying yourself. And I think enthusiasm is very um, infectious and it's, it's great to see someone having fun, and enjoying themselves. And then when you hop on a social media and see that you have an audience or some fans that really enjoy your show, enjoy your work, and then they kind of reciprocate the enthusiasm or uh, excitement, then it's always great to get refueled by that as a content creator. And I know that uh, another passion of yours is music. So I'm wondering where that passion comes from and what's currently on your uh, playlist now, buddy. Yeah, so I I would say it it kind of, because I'm very much in the world of electronic dance music or EDM or electronic music. And it kind of stems from just finding a sound that's very energetic, uh, almost euphoric at times. Yeah, I would say that my first experience was at a Swedish House Mafia show uh, in Toronto at the Rogers Center. And just being among that atmosphere and crowd really helped me understand what I was looking for when it came to music and uh, just a pa- and just developing a passion for it. And then throughout the years, I've been developing my DJ skills and that definitely contributed to my podcast, uh, the Eating Weekly Podcast. And what I'm listening to now, it's, it's kind of a bunch of everything. I'm listening to Bicep Glue. It's a song that came out in 2017, but that's definitely been reoccurring on my playlist. I listen to everything from Big Room, Techno, Trance, uh, Hard Style. It's, it's all over the place with me. It's, it's very much electronic centric, but there's so many different subgenres and styles of that overhead genre that uh, I can always find a track or a playlist for a certain mood, certain feeling, or just uh, enjoying myself. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a little music potpourri there, Garrett, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm also curious to know if you identify with any uh, specific movie songs or movie, is there a particular song in a movie that you identify most, most with? That's a good question. Uh, I, I I don't know if there's one particular song within a movie, but I think 
when it comes to an opening track because I as a as a creator as a DJ uh, I always look for that first opening track of a of my set and then there's a lot of great films that set up the whole scene and mood of the movie with a great opening track and uh, I think I admire that a lot because it kind of sets the tone for the art that you're trying to present or the content that you're kind of um, setting the scene for. Fantastic. And outside of work, what do you uh, define fun as, buddy? What do you like doing for fun? So I think my work and fun really intersect a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I figured you might say that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think as much as I kind of do a lot of fun as work, as just like this entrepreneur, uh, I try and just create experiences for myself. So I'm going to say that going to concerts, events, and uh, experiences are, are something that I really value, something that I seek or gain a lot of inspiration from. Uh, travel is another one. I love traveling to Amsterdam. It's a city that just really uh, revitalizes me as far as inspiration and something, it's a city that just captivates my attention every time and just really has this appeal uh, for me whenever booking flights and that's typically my destination. So for sure, uh, 2020 was a difficult year to kind of experience those uh, fun and hobby kind of things. Uh, my my uh, youngest sister will have uh, more stamps on her passport than I ever will. So I, I can relate <laughs> in that way, Jared, absolutely. So if people want to uh, connect with you, how best can they do that, Bob? Sure. So you can find me on social media at Garrett Cadet. Instagram, uh, that's a platform that I use a lot. YouTube.com slash Garrett Cadet is another platform that you'll find me posting a lot of videos, contents, DJ sets. And then garrettcadet.com is my personal website where you can find everything about me, reach out to me, anything like that. And yeah, those are the best ways to get hold of me. Well, Garrett, I thoroughly enjoyed our discussion this afternoon and learning all about uh, Strove Creative and what keeps you busy uh, both as an entrepreneur and pers personally in your personal life. I want to thank you for sharing your story with me this afternoon and for joining me. It's most appreciated. Thanks, Evan. Thanks for having me on the show.